Hey everyone, today I have two burgers here from Burger King. I have the Impossible Burger and I have a regular Whopper. Today we're going to be taking both of these and we're going to be cutting them in half, putting a half into this jar and another half of the other burger into this jar. We're going to leave them in these jars for the next few months and we're going to see how they decompose. The Impossible Burger to a regular burger with real meat. We're going to see how it compares. So first we're going to start by opening these up. So this here is a regular Whopper and this one here is the Impossible Whopper. Here's the Impossible Whopper. And here's the other Whopper. This one here they put a lot more stuff on, as you can see. There's a lot more tomato on that one. Actually getting up close and smelling these burgers, they smell exactly the same. But now I'm going to go ahead and cut them in half and stick them into the jars for the next few months. Okay, so here's the regular burger. Go ahead and slice that down the middle. There we go. Go ahead and stick that into this jar over here. Slide that in. Now this burger will stay in here, sealed up. Nice and tight. I made sure the burgers are cold so it doesn't fog up as much in there. I'm sure eventually it may fog up in there. Now we're going to take the Impossible Burger here. Put the nice part that I didn't squish into the jar. Got to put that lettuce back into there. Take a look at that. There is no visual difference. Uh, that one's already fogging up. Hopefully that goes away. I may have to vent it before it starts to get stinky. Okay, so I'm here eating these now. A lot of people say they can't taste the difference between these. There is an obvious difference. This one here, you can really taste a lot of the good flavor. This one here, the Impossible Burger, it's pretty bland. That's my opinion on them. And I even removed everything there so I can actually get a good taste of the meat. And this one here is super bland. And even the texture is a little different. Like the texture in this feels like there's a whole bunch of stuff stuck together. This one here is more smooth. The real meat one. I don't like that. But we're going to see how it decomposes. Here's an update on the burgers. This is the Impossible Burger. You see there's a little speck of mold starting on the patty itself. There's a little bit of growth right there of something white. There's no mold on the bun at all. You can see there's some mold right here starting on the lettuce. The lettuce is all dried up. But the bun doesn't have any mold that I can really see yet. That might be a little bit of mold like trying to start, but I don't really see it yet. On the real burger, the cheese is all like melting and stuff. The Impossible Burger doesn't come with cheese, or at least they didn't give it to me. That tomato is disgusting. That is all covered in mold. But the bun doesn't have any mold starting on it yet. Okay, it's now at 10 days, and this one is going nuts with fungus and stuff. Just the bun, both of them, the meat 
is completely intact. The vegetables are all rotten, falling apart and moldy. This one's bun is just starting to get a few specks of mold, but this one is absolutely covered in mold and even some black mold there forming. It has now been nearly six weeks and this one is just nasty. The Impossible Burger, the bottom where the air isn't getting to it isn't too bad, but you can see the fake meat has this nasty brown mold all over it. The bun is surrounded by green mold, white mold, there's some yellow mold, and the yellow mold looks like it has little water droplets on it. It's really nasty, but this other burger here doesn't seem to be doing that bad, considering how old it is now. You see it has all that white mold there, slowly making its way across the top. It's got a little bit of yellow mold in there. So I'm going to continue to keep these in these jars for a very long time. And in the future, I'll do an update on them when they get super, super nasty. Okay, now, for the first time in almost two months, we're going to open these things up because I want to take a sample of the mold just to look at under a microscope and all that. So this is probably going to stink real bad. I'm not going to breathe it in because there's a lot of mold inside this thing, but let's see if there's any kind of vacuum or anything that's formed. Okay, of course, not yet because it's a mason jar, so I've got to pry this thing off. Okay, absolutely nothing happened. There's all kinds of moisture on the inside of the cap. And now we can actually get a view of inside. You can see all the different mold forming in there. There's a bunch of water droplets on the mold. Uh, that, it's got a really sweet smell to it. Cause I can smell it coming up. It's a fermenting smell. I'm just going to take a little sample of this mold. I want to put it onto a slide right here. It doesn't want to really come off. I want to get a bigger piece of this just in case. Okay. Let's seal this back up. And we can let this sit a few more months, give it a year. Okay, now maybe you understand why I did this. I put one here, regular mold. I'm going to put a cover slip over that. Now the other piece here I took I put a drop of water on it so we can get a smoother image. Okay, we're going to get a quick look inside this one to why we're at this. I don't really think I should take a sample from this. I just leave it alone. Just want to give you guys a look inside of there. That mold looks so fine, it kind of looks like cream or something that was just put on it. But you see the onions still look perfect cheese kind of melted but a lot of the bun is still intact I'm gonna close this back up and this can go be put away with the other one okay mold is very interesting to look at under a microscope because it's very detailed once you actually get into the higher objectives so here we go we're gonna take a quick look around here these bigger pieces I think are actually pieces of bun I ripped off but what we're looking for are these small mold spores throughout. Here we have some different stuff that we can look at once we get deeper into this. But we're going to start off by going in here. Moving up to 250 times. And you can actually start to see the different mold spores now. It's not a great image because we're still pretty far out from seeing the stuff. But let's move up now to 1,000 times. Now it starts to look pretty awesome. You can see different strands. You can really see the mold spores. All the small round dots. That's the kind of stuff when you sniff mold, you breathe in. And depending on the kind of mold, it can really mess you up. Mold spores are completely 3D and they're round. So right now we're just looking at the tips, the tops of all of them. 
if I move in a little bit further you can start to focus in on the sides but then the top is blurry because we're looking at tiny round balls now let's move up again to the highest objective I'm now putting a drop of oil underneath the lens which helps to focus and here we go you can get an even clearer image it is like extremely hard to focus when you're in this far this is now 2500 times so you're just gonna get the common picture there adding and taking away light doesn't do much so now we're gonna go ahead and look over at the other one clean off that objective now we're gonna move over to the other cover slip where I actually added water to it and that would be this one here let's get to a good area where we don't have too much debris and now it kind of, kind of looks the same we got to go up again that's 20 no this is 250 times here and you see yeah, you can start to see some mold spores right there in the center of the screen but a lot of the stuff is kind of smudged from the water the water kind of messed it up this is 1000 times we're not going to get as clear of an image as I did earlier go up to the oil yeah the water pretty much just messed this up that's why I wanted to take two different samples because I figured this might happen so I hope this video was interesting thanks for watching